Tonight, Apple might announce new iPads on October 16th. Facebook is getting into healthcare, and it seems everyone is interested in mobile messaging. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 186 for Friday, October 3rd, 2014. This episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Citrix GoToAssist, the number one global market leader in remote support. Sign up for GoToAssist before October 10th to get another Citrix product free for six months. Visit GoToAssist.com and get started. Hello, everyone. I'm Jason Howell, and it's Friday. Let's get right to the tech feed. Recode is reporting that Apple will hold its next special event on Thursday, October 16th, not the 21st as previously rumored, citing sources familiar with the company's plans. The event will likely include the latest updates to its iPad line, such as a gold iPad model and Touch ID, new Retina iMac, and OS X Yosemite. The event will reportedly be held at the company's Town Hall Auditorium in Cupertino, though Apple has officially declined comment. U.S. District Judge Yvonne Gonzalez Rogers has given the go ahead for an antitrust lawsuit against Apple over accusations it used digital rights management or DRM to unlawfully maintain a stronghold in the iPod market. The plaintiffs are a class of consumers who bought iPods between 2006 and 2009 and are asking for $350 on the grounds that Apple used its FairPlay DRM system to lock in its customers and make it costly to switch to technology built by competitors, such as real networks. Because Apple kept updating iTunes, it ensured songs bought from Reel's competing digital music store couldn't be used on iPods. Almost 10 years ago, U.S. District Judge James Ware ruled for Apple in an initial version of the case, finding there was nothing illegal about installing software that made their product incompatible with competitors. The plaintiffs returned in 2010 with a new complaint focused on Real Network's specific workaround for the Apple DRM and Apple's counterattack. Judge Ware retired in 2012, and the case moved to Gonzalez Rogers. Apple now has a choice to either strike a deal or face a costly trial in front of a jury, which has been set for November 17th in Oakland, California. The Wall Street Journal is reporting that Yahoo plans to reinvest some of the cash it made from Chinese e-commerce company Alibaba's IPO into Snapchat. The journal is citing three anonymous people familiar with matter uh, who say the investment hasn't yet closed but would value Snapchat at $10 billion. When Yahoo paid $1 billion for a 40% stake in Alibaba back in 2005, the investment grew to be worth 10 tens of billions of dollars and offered Yahoo CEO Marissa Meyer some time and money to reinvent Yahoo's core business. Snapchat, whose three-year-old app lets people send messages, photos, and video that disappear after several seconds, has more than 100 million users, and the company is planning to debut a new service for vanishing news articles and advertisements in the coming weeks, P people familiar with the matter told the journal in August. There's so many people familiar with the matter these days. The Yahoo funding would define Snapchat as one of the most valuable startups in the world and one of the highest valued startups in history to have no revenue stream. Facebook is joining Apple and Google by getting into the healthcare business, three anonymous sources tell Reuters. The company is reportedly considering creating online support communities that would connect Facebook users suffering from various ailments and also considering new preventative care standalone applications that would help people improve their lifestyles. Any advertising built around these health initiatives wouldn't be as targeted as it could be on television or other media, though. For example, pharmaceutical companies are prohibited from using Facebook to promote the sale of prescription drugs, in part because of concerns surrounding disclosures. Facebook declined to comment on its health care plans. And today, the Federal Communication Commission announced that Marriott will pay $600,000 in penalties after it was determined the hotel chain blocked mobile hotspots so that guests would have to pay for its own Wi-Fi services. The FCC fine comes after staff at the Gaylord Opryland Hotel and Convention Center in Nashville, Tennessee, were found to be jamming individual hotspots, then charging people up to $1,000 per device to access the Internet. The center has been under Marriott operations since 2012, when the interruptions scheme apparently began. The first complaint came to the FCC March 2013. 
when one guest told the commission they suspected their hardware had been jammed. The FCC investigated and through its enforcement bureau found that a Wi-Fi monitoring system installed at the Gaylord Opryland would target access points with deauthentication packets disconnecting users so that their browsing was un was interrupted. Then Marriott would offer its own wireless internet service to attendees and exhibitors charging between $250 and $1,000 per connected device. This, of course, violates Section 333 of the Communications Act, which states that, quote, no person shall willfully or maliciously interfere with or cause interference to any radio communications of any station licensed or authorized by or under this chapter or operated by the United States government. End quote. <laughs> Along with a fine, Marriott will be barred from using Wi-Fi blocking technology and must file regular reports with the FCC for three years detailing its efforts to comply with the law. Now, coming up, Google is developing displays that look a lot like Lego, if you can believe that. We've got all the details. And next, I'll chat with Engadget's Billy Steele about the big push for mobile messaging from Facebook, Google, and Yahoo. But first, let's thank Citrix GoToAssist for supporting tech news tonight. Managing your company's IT support needs can be challenging, especially when you have remote or mobile employees. That's why I highly recommend Citrix GoToAssist. It's the number one global market leader in remote support. This easy-to-use cloud-based remote support solution allows you and your IT team to solve problems faster. If you sign up for GoToAssist before October 10th, you'll get another Citrix product of your choice free for six months. GoToAssist Remote Support lets you provide live and unattended remote support to any computer or mobile device. Screen share to diagnose and fix support problems faster and more effectively. And use GoToAssist apps to easily deliver support anytime, anywhere. If you work in IT, I want you to try GoToAssist. Sign up for GoToAssist today and get another Citrix tool free for six months. Visit GoToAssist.com and get started, but don't wait. The special offer ends October 10th. Visit gotoassist.com and sign up to receive this special offer today. All right, joining me now is Billy Still, Associate Editor at Engadget. Welcome back to the show, Billy. Thanks for having me again. Absolutely. So we've got a little messaging blog, a lot of messaging to talk about. So let's first start with Facebook, who won, uh, wins EU approval for its $19 billion WhatsApp bid. Uh, this is more than just mobile uh, messaging. Why is this significant for Facebook? Well, on the surface, it allows them to tap into that $19 billion purchase of uh, several hundred million users worldwide that WhatsApp has. So it allows them to really get their hands on what they've invested in. Um, but mostly it is about that international expansion. Um, cultivating users in areas where their own Facebook Messenger just isn't that popular. Gotcha. Now, of course, uh, Facebook wasn't the only suitor for WhatsApp. Google was outbid for WhatsApp by Facebook. And now there seems to be some movement from Google uh, into the mobile messaging space. What exactly is going on here with this, with this news that we, we're hearing about today with Google? Well, Google's um, plans, allegedly, uh, are a little mm -hmm. different than Facebook's. Um, they're looking at a messaging service for uh, developing areas, so places like India, uh, for example, where unlimited messaging just isn't a part of the cell phone plans or the mobile plans at all. So these services bring uh, that free, unlimited messaging person-to-person. Uh, -person. Now, would this be a standalone uh, part of the Google ecosystem, or would this kind of be separate uh, from their other offerings like Hangouts and those kind of things? Right. Um, it would be different from Hangouts. Um, Hangouts is very much a part of uh, Google's plans um, it, in terms of uh, full-on Android. Um, but in terms of uh, initiative like Android One that also takes aim at those developing nations and low-cost devices are around $100, um, so minimal uh, investments, um, 
this new app would sort of be a part of that Android One initiative. Um, Hangouts would still be the main go-to, but this would have a slightly different focus. And I have to imagine that's probably part of the reason why the Economic Times said that they that uh, Google sent product manager Nikhil Singhal uh, to India. Is that kind of part of what we're understanding his reason for being there was for? Right. So that report says that, um, you know, Google sent someone who has worked on Hangouts and Google Plus and, and those type properties um, to India to sort of get the lay of the land. So it just makes sense that you would uh, take someone and send them there to sort of see, you know, what's going on. Mm -hmm. What the needs of the, the region are and everything. Now, right. um, do we have any sense as far as when to expect this uh, this app to launch Sometime in the near future? Are we talking next year? Do we just have no clue? <laughs> well, um, Google has already sort of outed um, some Android One devices. Mm -hmm. um, and Android L, the, the next version of the Android operating system, would be due uh, the end of this month. It's usually due um, in the fall is when we um, see that arrive. But what these reports about the new messaging service don't really shed much light on is how far along they are in the development of the service. Mm -hmm. So I would say it would be as as early as when Android L is officially launched, um, and it could be on into next year. Yeah, and I mean, just touching on on some of the rumors that that I've seen around the some of the next Nexus devices in the in a leaked photo of the Nexus Six, there is a new messaging icon. Uh, on the screen. And this was before, of course, we heard about this this report. So it's interesting. We could very well see this uh, very soon. Um, now, of course, we can't leave out Yahoo. It appears Yahoo has acquired mobile messaging app MessageMe. What, what exactly do we know about this deal? So MessageMe um, is a, a messaging startup that um, was founded by some folks who have experience in mobile gaming and social gaming and that sort of thing. Um, and it saw some pretty substantial growth early on that kind of uh, plateaued. Um, so it it just makes sense that, that the, the rise in popularity of these messaging apps, that it's sort of everybody's hopping on the bandwagon and, and Yahoo saw this as their opportunity. Yeah, there really is a lot of interest suddenly on mobile messaging. That is a big deal right now. So, uh, well, that's awesome stuff. Uh, Billy Steele, associate editor for Engadget. Thank you so much for coming back on the show with us today. Yep, my pleasure. Where can people follow your work online? Um, I post daily to Engadget.com, um, and you can follow me on Twitter at WM Steel. I usually post links from articles, um, not only that I've written, but that my colleagues at Engadget have written as well. Excellent. Well, Billy, thanks once again. We'll have you back soon. Thank you. Take care. All right. And finally, what isn't Google doing these days? Self-driving cars, balloons that beam internet from the sky. Next up, really, really big TVs. Wall Street Journal sources say that Google's secretive advanced projects lab, that's Google X, is developing a display composed of smaller screens that plug together like Legos to create a seamless image. The project is led by Mary Lou Jepsen, a former Massachusetts Institute of Technology professor best known for co-founding the One Laptop Per Child project. Jepsen now heads the display division inside Google X, and her team reportedly includes re veteran engineers from Samsung and Qualcomm. The project is said to seek to make display modules that are seamless so that people looking at a giant screen wouldn't see the borders between the modules while absorbing a variety of content sources. Google X is the department behind Google Glass, of course, Google's self-driving car project, a futuristic contact lens for diabetics to measure blood glucose levels, a project to deliver internet access from balloons in the stratosphere, and a new life sciences team collecting data to understand human health among many other things. That's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. You can subscribe to this show at twit.tv slash TN2. Of course, you can always write us at TN2 at twit.tv. And don't miss our morning news program. That's Tech News Today, every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Jason Howell. Thanks so much for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by cashfly.com.